Today is March uh, 22nd. Uh, it's 9 o'clock. We are looking for the uh, coordinate of the Pendleton Artificial Reef. We are right now 3320 north and 11733 west. Uh, the coordinates are uh, 3319. So we have to go one degree south, which is about. The reef was laid in 1980. Ni 1990 or 1980? 1980. 1980. Uh, it's uh, 3.5 acres. Uh, it's a pilot experimental reef of the developmental reef series. Thousand ton of quarry rocks. Deployed back in 1980, this is the Camp Pendleton Artificial Reef. Seven different quarry rock piles totaling 10,000 tons. Each corridor is connected by sort of a golden pathway made out of small cobblestones and quarry rocks, which allows the marine life to move about freely and escape predation. The reef is incredibly unique in that sense. It's the only reef in Southern California that was connected in that fashion. This is the very top of the pile. There's about 12 foot of relief. So it comes about 12 feet off the bottom and the water is dramatically clear at the tip of each pile versus the bottom. As you can see, it's covered in blacksmith, blacksmith which are one of the smallest pelagic fish in California. There's Garibaldi, our state fish, which is named ironically for a bunch of fishermen. Those are Gagonians. There's two different species. Those are Sargos, named for the stripe, like Sargento, the stripes on a sergeant. They're actually a croaker. They have brilliant white meat and they talk to each other by croaking. Anywhere you have high relief, you have several different species of gorgonians and there's some large red sea urchins i cracked one of these open i have to admit to feed the calico bass and they were full of roe so you don't necessarily need macrocystis or giant kelp to have high quality sea urchins there's sand bass a very important sport species and there's a number of very large individuals here there's a bat star as you get down towards the base and the rocks get flatter, you see that there's macrocystis begins to grow. It's a very simple equation. Build the reef high and you have gargonians and lots of fish as long as the boulders are large enough to create large caves. Build the reef flat and you will have macrocystis and kelp, but not much fish. There's some sea stars and some scallop shells that they appear to have eaten, another Garibaldi, and a keyhole limpet, which is an incredibly important species uh, for pharmaceutical research. The Garibaldis kind of talk when they're underwater. You can hear them sort of croak and grunt. And there's a nice lobster and a scallop hanging just over its head. I bet he's happy season just ended. Another nice calico bass. So we're calico bass all over this reef. Here we are at the very top. You can see the water's clear. There's a distinct difference between the piles. Some of the piles have smaller quarry rock, maybe 500 pounds a piece, uh, with smaller caves and distinctly less life and actually dirtier water for some reason. There's a nice picture of a juvenile sheephead and a sand bass. And the rock piles, like this one with a sculpin in it, and a Garibaldi that have large caves have a lot more fish. There's some egg casings on the bottom. As you can see, it's placed on semi-hard sand. There's about 50 to 60 feet between each pile. There's a bunch of calicos just devouring a sea urchin. The biodiversity is just amazing at this reef. Anywhere you have blacksmith, which is what you see in front of you, you have the proper miniature upwelling from the high relief structure, which is what brings in pelagic fish or even allows them to come in and breed. 
They're, they are an indicator species. They are an indicator that the current is just right. Some vegetation on the bottom. And a senorita fish. And another juvenile female sheephead. Oh, another lobster. What do you know? Now this reef has been down on the seafloor for 34 years. There was a nice halibut. As you can see, it was injured actually, and it was sitting on the reef. It was not sitting on the sand, it was sitting directly on the rocks, which is sort of counterintuitive for where you'd expect to find a halibut. And there's a juvenile Garibaldi, you can tell by the purple spots. Now here we are moving between rock piles. There's a rubber tire somebody threw over. There's a number of those on the seafloor. And part of the mission of the Fish Reef Project will be to remove foreign debris of this matter. Now, as you can see, this is, this is one of the reef balls that was dropped off of Henry's Beach in June of 2012. And it actually grows kelp. So the reef balls are a beautiful balance between low relief and high relief structure. To where you get cave area to where you have a lot of fish and scallops and all of the good things but you also get kelp growth as you can see the kelp grows all the way down on the bottom now here's another one of those pathways between the quarry rock piles there's a very small sheephead right there teeny tiny juvenile There's a nice, uh, nice, decent male sheephead. Another picture of that halibut. Sorry, I had to show it to you twice. Now here we are again, going between rock piles to where you have flat rocks, which is what you see in the North Wheeler Reef, where you have a bunch of rocks that are flat that grows kelp, but you don't have much fish. Although I will say that between the quarry rock piles where you had these sort of pathways, you did have a large number of small fish. There's a beautiful picture of a sculpin or California scorpion fish. So the small fish tend to use the pathways. And if we can create pathways uh, using reef balls, three abreast, maybe 15 feet, three different sizes. Oh, there's another unfortunate rubber tire that we would like to remove. And a beautiful giant red sea urchin. The, the sea urchins were huge. Here we are surfacing about 100 yards away. So that's a wrap on the Camp Pendleton Reef here uh, for our, our reef survey. As you can see, there was a couple of rubber tires down there. You get to remove those. The uh, reef was absolutely full of life, and the halibut was a, was the bonus. It's sculpin, gargonians, everything you ever wanted down there. As you can see, between the reefs, there was a uh, kelp on the flat rocks that connected the reef. And I think the most important thing to note is the small cobblestone connecting the reefs. Uh, there were a lot more smaller fish using the corridors between the reefs and avoiding predation between it as a way to uh, move between the reefs um, without getting eaten for the most part. So exciting things to come. So here we are at the barn kelp on the lower half of Camp Pendleton. This is the uh, replicate reef used for the North Wheeler Reef study. So it's uh, about a three mile long kelp bed with a uh, rocky bottom. We're going to go down and take a look and see how it compares to the artificial reef uh, about a mile and a half north of here. This is the barn. Uh, the barn. Uh, we are about halfway between Dana Point and Oceanside in front of Camp Pendleton. Uh, this is a very good, uh, very good reef. We, uh, we have seen a lot of fish here for many years. Um, that's it. Yeah, let's go take a look. Here we are on the seafloor at the barn kelp in about the same depth, just about 50 feet of water, 45-50 feet of water. This is a natural reef. 
as you can see, there's there's a lot of kelp or macrocystis because the reef is is lower lying and, and flatter. However, there is some high relief materials that come up several feet off the bottom. There's a small calico and a small male sheephead and some senorita fish and some laminaria and a sand bass and a small calico. So you're not seeing the schools of fish here. You're not seeing schools of fish and you're certainly not seeing big fish. And when you look in the holes, not one lobster, not one keyhole limpet. It is clear as day when you build a properly constructed artificial reef. Now here's a nice piece of natural structure that comes off the bottom and there's still not much there. But as you can see, as soon as it lifts off the bottom, you get the gorgonians, you get the sea urchins, you get a little bit more fish and uh, no macrocystis, no giant kelp. So it's almost like a, a perfect formula. Now, the artificial reefs that are built in Southern California out of Coyer Rock that come about 12 feet off the bottom, there's a baby female sheephead. They're like cities. They both attract people, but they also produce people in terms of fish they attract fish but they also produce fish and over the long term i think that it is safe to say that there's a net benefit i think that the evidence is absolutely clear there's just no denying that reefs have a legitimate place in fisheries management and we have the ability to increase our fish stocks i realize that there's trepidation towards acknowledging that but that is the case and we have it within our power to take action and do the right thing.